What is shaking, Internet? This is Salts bringing you the How to Tank for Dummies Megara LFR Guide. Megara is the fifth boss in the Throne of Thunder, or the second in the second quarter Forgotten Depths LFR instance. First up is the trash. Well, trash slowly gets worse and worse the further into this raid we go. Uh, there's a whole dungeon's worth of trash before Megara. Uh, it's mostly just trash, though, at least, without anything crazy. Uh, just AoE as much as possible, and interrupt any abilities you can, but it shouldn't really be that bad. Uh, watch out for extra packs that stupid mages pick up in LFR. It can get out of hand pretty quick. Um, a quick note is that you actually, actually you have to kill three guardians before getting to Megara. Uh, there's one directly to the left as soon as you get into the first big cavernous room. Um, the second one is on the far side of the room, a little bit to the right, near the end of the river on the map. Uh, it will be at the back of the cave as you walk into that first big room. The last is on the opposite side of the entire area, at the back of the bend in the road leading down to Megara. You'll have to kill all of them before Megara will show up. So, for Megara herself, let's talk tank strat first. There will always be two heads up to tank, so the tanks should simply each take a head. Uh, no matter what head you're tanking, you should face them away from the rest of the raid, and the other tank. Um, all of the heads do some kind of breath attack. Swapping between the heads might differ based on your tank, so I'll explain what seems to be the most popular strat I've seen so far. Uh, but before we get into too in-depth uh, on the strategy, let's talk about what abilities the boss has. The boss has three heads total, two of which will be up at any given time. The green head is Venomous. Oh, <gasps> shocker. Uh, it's a, its breath attack will do damage and increase all damage taken by people who are breathed on. Uh, the blue head is Frosty, and its breath attack will do damage and put stacks on anyone it breathes on. If these stacks reach five, the player will be frozen for 20 seconds. Again, that sounds like forever. Uh, the red head will breathe fire on people and do damage, as well as put a DOT on anyone for 45 seconds. Uh, none of these should ever hit anyone but the tanks. The frost will hope hopefully never proc, but the flames and venom can lead to some big damage. Cooldown should be used when tanking either of these heads. Okay, now for a bit more explanation. Whenever you kill one of the heads, three things will happen. First, a new head will spawn. For example, if you have green and blue up, and you kill green, red will always spawn. Second, the heads will begin rampaging, doing raid-wide damage. Uh, when the rampage happens, the whole raid should stack up, even tanks if you can. Third, a new head will appear out in the distance. Let's talk about those distant head for, heads for a bit. The heads in the distance will each do a specific move. First up is the green heads. Uh, these guys will throw acid rain at random players, doing a good chunk of damage, <laughs> I love that phrase, to the target and anyone close by. Uh, try not to stand near people, but that shouldn't be hard as you'll be facing the heads away from the raid. The blue heads will shoot an ice beam at a random player doing damage and leaving freezing zones behind. Again, not really your concern. Uh, red heads will burn random players with cinders, which does damage and puts a DOT on that player. If it's dispelled, a big fire zone appears on the ground. Uh, don't stand in this. Shocker, I know, don't stand in the fire. Luckily, none of these moves should ever really concern you as a tank, but don't stand in or near any of these zones if you can. Uh, a quick note about these moves. If an ice beam hits a fire zone while it's chasing a player down, it will erase the zone. Additionally, if a burning player runs through a frost zone, it'll erase that zone. Okay, now we are pretty familiar with most of what the heads do. Let's go back to the basic strategy and expand on it a bit. Here's the number one best strategy I've seen in LFR. Kill only green and red heads. What this will do is make more acid rains and fire zones appear, but it'll let you ignore the beam and the frozen zones completely. Uh, note that as you kill the heads, new heads will do more damage. For example, each time you kill a green head, all green heads will do more damage both in the back and on the platform. Still, this makes for a simpler fight and is pretty is still pretty manageable for the healers. To execute this simple strategy, simply have one tank on blue and one tank on green at the start of the fight, facing away from the raid, obviously, so that the raid is standing between the two heads. Focus green, since you'll never be killing blue. 
Once green dies, the blue tank should run to uh, red, and the green tank should run to blue. This will guarantee all stacks are cleared, and give each tank a breather every so often. Um, since blue does damage, but shouldn't be a problem as long as you never get to five stacks. This, strat this strategy literally repeats over and over again with... When red dies, the red tank goes to blue, and the blue goes the blue tank goes to green. Okay, you might be wondering how to actually kill the boss. Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is kill any seven heads. As soon as you kill seven heads, the boss will instantly die. Using this strategy, after the fourth green head dies, then you'll you should get a pretty little loot screen. Um, let's pretend your raid is bad, and ignoring what you have to say. This generally means that the basic strategy will be followed instead of this strategy I explained. Um, this is the cycling strategy where you kill green, then blue, then red, then back to green and repeat. Uh, tanking is essentially the same except you just move down the row. Best way to handle this is to have one tank on green and one tank on blue at the start, then blue, the blue tank moves to red and the green tank moves to blue. After blue dies there might be some confusion. Uh, the best way to do it is have blue, the blue tank, move to red, and the red tank move to green. But this goes against the basic laws of space, because blue tank is actually closer to green. Yeah. Uh, if red tank stays where he's at, then blue will move to green, which isn't a big deal, but red tank will be taking quite a beating while those burning stacks get higher and higher. Hopefully, this makes some sense with my crude diagrams. Um, the simple fact is that there is very little for tanks to truly do in this fight. As long as there is a tank on each head, and they're facing them away from the raid, the tanks are doing just fine. Just know which one is dying so that you can get to the next one correctly. Keep cooldowns ready for any high stacks of any breath attacks, like the high venom venomous stacks or the high um, uh, the burning stacks. Try to talk with the other tank to make sure you know where you're going after each head dies, so you know which rotation you're going. As you can see in my video, we actually had one tank stay on the blue forever facing them away from the raid at all times. This was the simplest for me to explain, and it worked out just fine. So don't worry too much about it. Just be aware where the other tank is at all times. Uh, in normal, a large amount of changes occur. Um, there are three heads alive at the start, and so strategies can be wildly different. And three heads will actually respawn after you kill two heads, and it gets confusing after that, but yeah. Uh, the abilities the, the ability the, uh, pardon me the abilities themselves look to be about the same though so at least there's that well I hope you enjoyed this guide for dummies please like favorite subscribe all that jazz and as always you keep it salty internet.